Hello everybody. Today is the Austrian national holiday, so I have a day off, meaning I'm not gonna make a car video now. Um, and as you can see, I made the set here a little bit Austria and also slightly Lusk crazy. I think I have Austria shirts have Lusk shirts. In fact, you see all my Aust favorite one. That actually, if you go now on my blog, link right here, uh, you will see written a post about this shirt and will take it from there. Um, I'm actually planning to make a video of at least one, if not two, of these shirts. This one you already seen in the video, those three are the ones that are missing so far. And we'll come at least one of them, at least one of them um, today in a video in the evening. And uh, there will be another post on Austria. So there's a little bit Austria overkill today. But Europa League is what we want to talk about now and yeah, uh, so and so uh, we had Salzburg winning 3-0 against Rosenborg Trondheim which was more or less expected. Uh, they were not happy with their performance, still they won 3-0, sit on top of Group uh, B with a perfect record, record scoring three goals I think in every game. On my phone here, that's the advantage, I can check the scores. Yeah, they've scored three goals in every game, only conceded three. So yeah, they're looking uh, quite good once more. Um, the other like, team was, of course, uh, Rapid Wien lost 5-0 at Villarreal. They're in a horrible uh, form at the moment. They, uh, they lost to Hartberg uh, at the weekend, which is a tiny town in Styria. They have a team that originally didn't even get the license to play, and now they beat the biggest team in Austria in, uh, in Rapid Wien. There's clearly things going wrong there. So. That's uh, not good. The only thing that helped them was the new little draw between Spartak and Rangers. So they're not too much off the pace. We have now Rangers and Villarreal with five points in that group. Like Moscow is uh, last with two. Rapid won on the first day. Since then, Spartak has not lost. And Rapid, yeah, is the only team with two losses, but they have a win. I still think it will be hard to even get to third place. I actually think Rapid might well finish last in this group, especially after showing like yesterday, that was horrible. But I want to go quickly through the games that I kind of followed and then we'll look at all the results here on my phone. Uh, if I look a little bit too much down, it's because I don't want, ah, we can. I can uh, say, say that easily. So um, I told you the Salzburg game, of course, the other game that I was not really watching because um, we had some better things to do uh, at the time. My wife is going on a trip. I, we have to get a bed that they prepare. The girls are there. Then we were celebrating my birthday, although I have not a birthday yet, but soon, tomorrow is my birthday. So uh, we celebrated yesterday in the evening. So that kind of took care of the Milan game. And actually was when I saw how it's going, I was always checking uh, Milan. 0-1 uh, behind uh, already around 30 minutes. Then um, when I saw the highlights, if in two minutes later they should have been two down, but the goal was not allowed. And justly so, I have to say, because there was no... I said Egoin uh, missed a big chance. Uh, they should have equalized the game, to be honest. Uh, but I don't know what rolled him there. So Betis was the better team and that was exactly what I feared that Betis will overwhelm Milan and especially coming off the derby loss, I think. And if it's also, it's also a lineup, it was not the best team for Milan playing. Uh, Betis with a wonderful goal made it 2-0 uh, very soon thereafter. And yeah, Milan came back during the 83rd. Then Samu Castillejo had a valid claim for a penalty, so it could have been a penalty maybe 2-2. But he got a red card. Um, so if I say it could have been a penalty, but then there also was a goal disallowed. So, you know, however I look at it, whenever I want to make a case that Milan should have gotten a point, I find a counter argument. No, they lost. Deserve it. What can I say? Olympiacos, I think, in that group also won against Tudelange 2 0. So, um, yeah, let's check this group. This is group. F as far as I know, yeah, Betis is now with 7, Milan with 6, Olympiacos with 4 and Tudelange of course with 0 points. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about that Milan now has to go to Sevilla. I'm hoping for a draw and yeah, if Olympiacos, I guess Olympiacos will get the win. But if Milan gets a draw there, they still have the tiebreak against Olympiacos and they might just sneak through because I think they can get results against Tudelange and Olympiacos again. So. 
remains to be seen, but Betis probably is the best team there. So those were the early games. There was a great game between Leverkusen and Zurich. Leverkusen in Zurich. I keep switching uh, home and away. Uh, sorry, it's just some, 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 there's a certain team in my head and I make it the home team, although it plays away. It happens so often uh, as of late. Um, it was a perfect win for Zurich. What do you mean with per perfect win? Well, they won 3-2. It was two lead changes. And this for me is perfect uh, goal. So Zurich had the early lead. Leverkusen, Belarabi with two uh, great goals. Turned it around, made it 2-1. And then Zurich came back. Horrible defending on the Leverkusen side. And then they gave up a late uh, goal and lost 3-2. Now Zurich sits on top of that group because Rasgrad only played 1-1, uh, I think, in Larnaca. We have now Zurich with 9, Leverkusen with 6, and Ludo Gorenz and Eich 1-1. One, one. Uh, Eich Larnaca 1-1. One, one. Each one has a point. That's exactly what I've been talking about in the Champions League yesterday, that if the two losers play, the last result you want to have is a draw. I know that Ludo Gorenz was ahead in that game. Um, as for the evening games, uh, let's uh, quickly, we always said Salzburg won 3-0, Leipzig also won 2-0, so uh, it's a very straightforward group, Salzburg 9, Leipzig 6, Celtic 3 and Trondheim 0, I still have some hope that uh, Celtic gets back in the game and uh, gets points of Leipzig um, in the return and maybe we get a little bit more even group. Um, I think two Red Bull teams advancing is a little bit odd, especially uh, have in mind that match day five, if uh, Celtic would win um, the next game, then match day five is Leipzig at Salzburg, and probably they can arrange something there that helps both teams. Remains to be seen. I uh, don't wanna say too much too much about it. I actually saw more of the evening games and the focus of, I watched um, kind of a video conference between the games and the focus there was of course of Frankfurt against Apollon Limassol. Um, wonderful first goal by Frankfurt uh, where the goalkeeper has the ball and it slips through his legs into the goal. It's just a nightmare and it's, all it is is a concentration error. He knows he has the ball, he's thinking already about the next step, but you know, you gotta do the things that you gotta do, then move forward, but just so happens. Uh, there were a few curious goals, uh, we'll get also, uh, so Frankfurt won 2-0, could have won more, uh, although Ike had a, not Ike, Apollon had a great chance where um, I think a high ball in, got deflected by the goalkeeper towards the, uh, towards the post, jumped off from there, then a uh, Cypriot attacker, I think, bicycle kicks it on his back and the rebound the defender saves. This was an unbelievable moment where they could have gotten back in the game, but not, it was not meant to be. So they did not um, make uh, that, that goal, but I think it was well-deserved. Frankfurt is the cream of that group, uh, gotta be said. In the parallel game, Lazio... And that I was surprising, beat Marseille 3-1. Um, they got a quickly early, early goal, made it 2-1 back, but then Lazio made it 3-1, just with a few minutes to go. And what's happening with Marseille? There's a single point, they were in the center. And actually Lazio against Marseille, uh, remember Lazio was eliminated by Salzburg, and Salzburg then by Marseille in the semi-final. This could have been a semi-final. And this was basically a game for hanging on for survival in that group. And now Lazio is looking uh, okay there. Just let me check the group. This, I think, it was Group H, exactly. Yeah, we have Frankfurt with 9, Lazio with 6, and Marseille and Limassol uh, with 1-1. One, one. Uh, one point each. So I think Lazio and Frankfurt are going through. Frankfurt probably is group winner because they have the big win against um, Lazio from the last. And Lazio won the other two games. They are now 6-6. Yeah, that group, I didn't expect Frankfurt to be that strong, honestly. Uh, but they seemingly getting things together. They started hor horribly in the season early, but now with new coach Hütter, there's something happening there. Uh, Sevilla was the other game that was a lot featured because there were six goals by Sevilla. Uh, against Akiza Spor. Uh, the second one from a penalty, that was not a penalty. Um, the third one, one of those crazy, crazy goals. Shot at the posts. Uh, goal, 
I think it was shot at the post. It jumps to the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper uh, mishandles it and goes back into in. It's got a really, really weird, weird goal. But that was the biggest win. And you know, the I always said Sevilla is the hottest team in Europe. Well, they got now undone by Barca or Messi. I should say um, they also lost the Krasnodar kind of crazily, um, which is totally out of character. But probably was a long ride. But overall, I think in that group, this is all Sevilla. Uh, let me find it. Yes, Sevilla six points, Krasnodar six points, but Krasnodar has the tiebreaker. Although Sevilla has twelve to three goals, it's unbelievable. They already beat. Standard the Liege 5-1 now 6-0 against Akiza Spore. Uh, absolutely rolling over the opposition. The other game, Standard the Liege uh, turned the game around against Krasnodar at halftime and then won it 2-1. Um, they are sitting now in third uh, place, I think. Yeah, it's actually very interesting. There are the three teams that I talked about now uh, with six points each. And I guess because of that, uh, the tiebreaker doesn't really work because Sevilla has the much better goal differential. So Sevilla is first, Krasnodar second, Stanley Liege is third. All on six points. This is an inter, 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 interesting group. I think that the second game between Krasnodar and Stanley Liege, this will decide who will go forward in that group. I don't see Sevilla not qualifying from that group. Was there any other game? Yeah, we had already Villarreal against Rapid. So those were the games that I was really watching. And then I only saw the goals and it was heartbreaking to see Pauk at home to lose to uh, Videoton, Shekes Feherva. Oh, no, that's, it's not called FC Vidi. I don't get it quite. I knew that they actually played well in the Champions League qualification. Uh, so I knew this is going to be a tough opponent. But power closing at home. Uh, they are in great form in, in, in the league. They haven't lost in the league yet. Maybe this is where the concentration is going. But that was a heartbreaker, honestly. What was his name? We had a hat trick scorer, uh, 3 1 against Bate and Loftus Cheek within 10 minutes had header a minute, made two, two goals, made a third in the 53rd, and then Rios uh, just pulled one back. But that was never in question. I actually liked the game for the jerseys because we had the all blue of Chelsea against the yellow. There's something of blue and yellow that really works well for me. We, we usually, it's a nice contrast. That I'm saying it here, all you see is white, black and red. Those are my favorite colors, by the way. If I hang Milan here, <laughs> we are good, but there's no, 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 no celebration about Milan. So in that group now, uh, Pauk still sits uh, now in second spot. But there are now three teams with three points. Chelsea won everything, and uh, everything else is a little bit a mess. Um, I wish that Park goes through, but they need a result in Hungary. They need a big result in Hungary. Uh, or beat Chelsea, something like that. But um, yeah, definitely an interesting group to look at. So let's, so let's run quickly through the other groups. A, uh, we already talked about. B was the Salzburg group. Group C, Zenit uh, also turns around against St. Petersburg, whereas um, I know uh, they had a penalty missed, but still made the winning goal. Um, it was, of course, the big man, uh, Juba, who made the equalizer, and he actually missed the penalty. But yeah, um, that actually puts up Bordeaux in a really bad position because they're last with zero points. That's uh, surprising. Slavia won in Copenhagen with light blue jerseys that I didn't see in my review. I really want to get, I have a long week and I really want to look at all the jerseys that I've seen now that I haven't covered and maybe make one or two uh, makeup videos that I will post uh, over the week. I have actually quite some stuff planned for uh, this weekend already. But let's see how this is going. So Slavia has, uh, Zenit has seven points, Slavia six, Copenhagen has only four points now. A little bit uh, surprising group the way it develops. I mean, Zenit was the favorite for sure, but that Bordeaux is last, I didn't expect that. Okay, uh, group D, and oh, this is an interesting group, where Dinamo Zagreb won everything. Um, against Spartak Trnava, they won 2 1 away from home. Uh, they were 1 0 down, but the turn turned around, played in their wonderful, ugly uh, neon jerseys. Anderlecht, after being 2 0 up, only managed a 2 2 draw against Fenerbahce, who played in the great uh, yellow and white 
against the purple looked also all right. Dinamo Zagreb sitting points out of three games, of course. Fenerbahce four, uh, Turnava three, and Anderlecht only one point. Also a little bit surprising to me. It was yesterday, it, it was actually a Belgium against Turkey day. So we'll see another matchup like that as well. Um, Arsenal won one nil in Sport at Sporting. I think as expected, but from what I heard, I haven't seen any, any highlights. I just saw all the goal that it was kind of a uh, scrappy performance. But it has to be said, Arsenal, under the new coach, there's something growing. That might be a dangerous team coming up. I don't know how serious they are. They are, and uh, Karabakh Akdam lost at home to Poltava. I actually didn't know uh, much about Poltava, but I was watching a series about the Great Northern War on Extra History. Nice channel if you're interested in his history. And the decisive battle was the Battle of Poltava. So that actually is a very historic. Arthur with nine, Sporting with six, Poltava with three, and Karabakh with zero. So they haven't won a thing. This is a nice and easy group. Group F is the Milan group. Group G is the one for Rapid. We also looked at Group H, the Frankfurt one. So, Group I. Yeah, this was uh, the Nordic duel between Salzburg and Malmö. Two late goals, first for Malmö, then for Salzburg. Uh, weird, because they were doing dark blue against black in Malmö. This was a weird matchup. And then the other Turkey against Belgium matchup, uh, Henk winning 4-2 at Besiktas. Besiktas is in trouble. Last close to Besiktas in the second qualifying round, and they should have beaten them. I'm not sure they would have made, made, made more points here, but yeah. So we have here Henk now with six points on top. Malmö, four. Sarsborg, four. That's pretty cool. And Besiktas has only three. Uh, the only win was for Besiktas on the first day uh, against Sarsborg. Other than that, they lost everything. Got the win against Henk. So this is uh, this is a definitely a very interesting group how it will develop. Maybe not big names, but you know, groups with such 6 4 4 3, everyone has a chance. I like that. Uh, group J is the Sevilla group, we already or, or said this is also a three way tie. And then we have uh, Group K, where the only team that. Uh, nah, there are two teams I know. Uh, Dynamo Kiev actually won at Ren 2 1, first win, so they have no five points. As they uh, played a 1 1 at Jablonets, where they equalized uh, very early. It was, I think, within the first 15 minutes or so. Let's see. Here the details. Yeah, within 11 minutes, there were the two goals of the night. So Jablonets got the second draw. Uh, Ren had their win in the first um, day against Jablonets. Now they lost at home to Dynamo Kiev. Uh, Kiev taken twice. They should be the strongest team, but Astana, I am surprised about that. Uh, so five points for Astana, five points for Kiev, three points for Ren, and two for Jablonets is also quite an open group. Well, we already talked about the last group, which is Group L, the Park and Chelsea group. So there you have it, my assessment of all the groups. Let me know which games you watched, whether you agree with my quick assessments. As I said, I saw all the games everywhere. I didn't see a full game where I was fully concentrated on, saw only a few highlights. Uh, the highlights that I watched closely, of course, were Milan, and I needed to watch Salzburg as well. Um, actually, I watched the um, second Salzburg goal. It was Yes, it went through the goals, two, three legs of the goalkeeper, but I think it was a nice move by Schlager before that. Uh, also, the Betis goal against me on the second one was a great goal. Hurts, but it was a great goal. Again, let me know what you watched, how you see things happening, which group are you most in interested in. Give me a thumbs up if you liked that video. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. And I'm going to make a few more videos, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.